There's one time I'm going to talk about the uh, supercell or ferrocell without whipping it out over here, the supercell over here. So I usually do demos. Since I have well over a thousand videos demoing and showing you and talking about the uh, supercell or the ferrocell, we place a magnet underneath the magnetic holographic viewing device. Everybody's seen one of those videos. Like I said, I've got over a thousand videos on said topic. The lines of interference, you actually see, you know, blackness, and then you see the light, and then blackness. So, and I've said before that these are constructive and destructive lines of interference. But first, let's apply retroductive Platonic, i.e. Pythagorean logic, to the most basic fundamental thing that we're looking at underneath the uh, supercell. And I'm not talked about this in the countless thousands of videos where I talk about magnetism. And let's make a bold yet undeniable assertion here. And let's ask ourselves the question, constructive, destructive interference of what against what? So we can either have all light or all darkness, but we actually have constructive and destructive interference, but what is the interference of and against or between? We would have interference or uh, friction going on in a boxing ring between two boxers, right, that are fighting it out for the belt, right, that big gold belt that boxers wear. So what is it that is fighting the other and the other that is fighting that prior that we're looking at underneath the supercell? Let me ask you a question, but first let's make a bold statement here. It's not bold at all, it's factual. If you actually uh, type in uh, magnetism and virtual photons or virtual particles, you'll actually come up with either Wikipedia or countless thousands of articles on the internet. And this is not my opinion, this is a fact. You will read, look it up, you don't have to believe me, look it up. They'll tell you that what's going on in a magnet is the emission, the emission, because all of current physics is not physics at all, it is atomistic, and these are not scientists, they're mathematicians. What's happening in the magnet is the emission of virtual, because they'll say, what's going on between two magnets, or just a magnet itself? The emission of virtual photons, or virtual particles, they call them either one. They both admit that they're one and the same thing. Virtual photons, virtual particles, which is fundamentally, quantifiably no different than saying uh, leprechauns and unicorns. Yeah. They literally think that something is being emitted from a magnet. And this is the basis for interaction between like a magnet and metal or two magnets. But let's get back to the supercell because all of you have seen probably more than one supercell video. I said I've got over a thousand of them. The constructive and destructive light, darkness, light, darkness, and of course completely dark in the middle, which everybody loves to say, wow, it looks just like a black hole would where it's dark at the center of either quote-unquote pole of the magnet. What do you think the interference is of between the lightness and the darkness on the supercell? Well, the supercell is just two optically flat pieces of glass with two liquids, a couple drops, and you squish the glass together and most of it squirts out the sides and you wipe it off and it stains my fingers. And there's some brown spots here where ferrofluid stained this tabletop. And of course, you place the magnet underneath it. You shoot light in there. So what do you think? Did you think that there's merely a magnetic field around it? Sure, everybody knows that. It's magnet as a magnetic field. What defines a magnet is not quantitative. It's qualitative. Before a magnet actually becomes a magnet, it is quantitatively 100% identical. Point source field incommensurability is what defines a magnet. It's the same distinction between a light bulb and a laser. Of course, you can't turn a light bulb into a laser, but before a magnet becomes a magnet, it is essentially like a light bulb, analogously. And when it does become a magnet, it is essentially like, don't take the analogy too far, like a laser. What defines a laser is not coherent light emission, which is attributionally correct. It is a point source field object, point source incommensurability. This is the reason why a 5 watt light bulb is useless and a 5 watt laser is dangerous. It will permanently blind you, right? 
So what defines a magnet is not quantitative at all. It's not my opinion. It's hardcore, undeniable fact. It is qualitative. What is going on? And magnetism is the dielectric field. Yeah? So we could say that steam is the field of water. And when it's water gets hot, it becomes the field of steam. Now, anybody with two brain cells knows that ice, water, and steam are both one and the same thing. All three of those things are exactly the same thing, the water molecule. They are typified by, of course, pressure mediation. Temperature, pressure, you know, human beings love to pigeonhole things. This is also too undeniable. The point being, getting right to the point, because I don't like logomaki. Logomaki means just, you know, spewing at the mouth and flapping your lips endlessly is that what we're seeing in the constructive and destructive interference on either quote-unquote pole of a magnet. And a magnet doesn't actually have poles. Well, sure it does. Everybody knows a magnet has a north pole and a south pole. No, it actually has a magnetic field, and magnetism, by definition, is centrifugal force in motion. And fundamental force itself is a three-dimensional S-curve. If you want to know what the uh, geometry of a magnetic line of force, and there are no lines, this is another conceptual reification which has no basis in reality. You take a piece of wire, you shape it like an S, and you take either end of the S and you bend it inverse to one another. And that paints, paints if you will, the interior geometry and ultimately the entire geometry of the toroid. But whence the constructive and destructive lines of interference? What is interfering or fighting with something else? What is fighting with something else, and they're mutually fighting, not literally fighting. You know, they're fighting for the same space to exist. And don't take that analogy too far. Is the magnetic and the dielectric. There is a reason why every magnet underneath the ferrocell or supercell is black. Yeah? And it doesn't matter if you look at a pyramidal magnet underneath it or a spherical magnet or a ring magnet or a square magnet. It doesn't matter. The field is always the same what is fighting something else. Each one is fighting each other for the, the exact same presence to exist. One, of course, is fighting to exist, and that would be magnetism, which is the release of energy or inertia, because magnetism is the dielectric field, as Faraday stated. Dielectricity is fighting for increasing inertia and acceleration back to counter space. That's the reason why you see no light at the center of a magnet. That is the dielectric portal, as I've called it. You see the brightest light at the plane of inertia. You see this bright line, you can use magnetic viewing film, or you could actually use uh, the supercell over here. The plane of inertia, or the nexus of counter space. You could say zero point energy, you could say counter space, you could say uh, ether port, it doesn't matter what we reify it as conceptually. What we're talking about, the magnetic and the dielectric in superimposition of one another, finding the lowest pressure mediation to exist. And that same um, starburst pattern, and everybody's seen the supercell videos, is the lowest pressure mediation for mutual existence between the magnetic and the dielectric. That same geometry follows, by the way, the golden angle, 137.5077. Also, if two follows 85, it would take a lot longer to explain that. But it's the exact same pattern you see on the head of a sunflower. I don't know if you've ever seen a sunflower pattern after, you know, the, the flowers have fallen off. You just see the seeds. That perfect phyllotaxis, yeah, looks exactly like a sunflower. Because that's the lowest pressure mediation for the maximum amount of seeds to exist on the head of a sunflower. What is the maximum number of seeds, manner in which, in geometry thereof, you can fit as many sunflower seeds on a sunflower head, yay big, or this big, or this big, doesn't matter how big it is. Well, that phyllotaxis for existence is the 137.5077, also too called the golden angle. We're not talking about the golden angle or the golden section. We're not talking about the golden ratio. And by the way, which is phi is to one is one is to phi. In other words, the phyllotaxis of beauty and perfection is nothing other than an extrapolative manifestation of the one itself. And that's the reason why the Fibonacci sequence begins with one and one. One, one, two, three, five, eight, thirteen, so on and so forth. Anyway, we're looking at the interplay between the magnetic and dielectric. Because every scientist on Earth, every 
less than intelligent individual that has not given it countless thousands and thousands of hours of thought and applied platonic Pythagorean retroduction to the nature of the most fundamental force of the entire universe, i.e. magnetism, they think, because they've never given it any thought, nor can they think deeply, nor can they think clearly. Some of the most brilliant minds, by the way, can't think clearly. This is a quote from Nikola Tesla. They, they can think deeply, but they can't think clearly. Unquote Nikola Tesla. They think what is occurring and what they will tell you, and what every scientist is like, well, a magnet is a magnetic field. If there was only a magnetic field, magnetism only, around a magnet, we would not see constructive and destructive interference. Light, dark, light, dark. You've seen it, I've seen it. I've made thousands of videos of the supercell. Thousands, literally. So I don't need to demo it in this video. Just go type in supercell. I'll get a thousand hits on my videos. Seeing constructive and destructive interference between two field modalities, which were one and the same thing. I like talking about ice and water, right? Ice and water are both water. Well, magnetism and dielectricity are the same thing, typified by different attributional states. Kind of like ice, water, and steam. Magnetism is the dielectric field. Just as the mushroom cloud of an atomic uh, plume is that softball-sized lump of silvery uh, plutonium. One is uh, pure potential, and the other one is the release of pure potential. But they are ultimately the same thing. This is what impresses people, not energy itself, which would be that softball-sized lump of plutonium or uranium, fissionable uranium. Rather, the actual huge cloud that, uh, you know, peels the paint off of your house and, uh, you know, turns people to dust. That's what impresses people. The exact same principle exists under what we actually see when we use light. And I actually made a supercell using just sunlight. You can look, the, look up the video. Using light to paint the field phenomena around a magnet. We don't see one thing. We see construct. Why do you think we would ever see constructive or destructive interference? Just think about that for a second. Pause the video. We don't see just light. We don't see just dark. We see this intricate um, um, hypertrochoid. There's the word I haven't used in a couple months. Hypertrochoidal pattern. You know, a spirograph-like pattern, right? We actually see a hypertrochoid on either quote-unquote pole of the magnet. Yeah. This is undeniable. That hypertrochoidal pattern is the fight between the magnetic and the dielectric as they are expressing themselves towards their mutual, well, it's not mutual, their anti-mutual uh, force of motion and inertia and acceleration. It's not like, it's exactly like if the door on my living room here were the uh, dielectric portal of either quote-unquote pole of a magnet and it had two fat guys. One fat guy being me trying to rush out the door. You ever seen like uh, the Three Stooges like where they're trying to like all rush out the door at the same time and they get stuck? You know, a fat guy trying to run out the door which would be magnetism and a fat guy trying to run in the door which would be the dielectric. And then we actually create an interference pattern. We don't see one thing underneath the supercell for good reason because magnetism does not exist. A magnet does not have a magnetic field or sure it does. No, it is the interplay between the magnetic and the dielectric. Those expanding contracting loops and by the way if you want to know what space is, space is the after effect of a divergent magnetic field. Space is no different than a shadow. This is the reason why Nikola Tesla scorned Einstein who thought space had properties. You could bend space. We were all brought up with this nonsense. It's completely not true. Space has no properties. It does have attributes. But space is no different than a shadow. And space is no different... Uh, I was trying to think of the words. So, uh, concept reification like emptiness, a shadow, space. These things don't exist of themselves. They are attributional... Um, uh, posterior attributes of principles. The principle, of course, of a magnet would be the dielectric. Um, the attribute of the dielectric is, is its extrinsic attribute is 1 over 5 to the power of negative 3, which would take hours and hours to explain, manifests the magnetic field. The release of that energy or inertia 
which manifests as centrifugal force and motion, of which the after effect is space. And when you actually have mass and magnitude, you have time. And by the way, I've said this over and over again, time, every ancient culture, both Greek, Egyptian, and Indian, has said time is the number four. Time exists conventionally, but it doesn't exist ultimately. There's no such thing as time. It does exist conventionally, but it doesn't exist ultimately. And since time does not ultimately exist, just as space does not have any properties, it only has attributes. This is the reason why every ancient culture said space is the number four. And four is the only number missing in the first five div digits of the Fibonacci sequence. One, one, two, three, five. One, one, two, three, five. What's the only number missing there? The number four, which is time. And space is the after effect the posterior attribute specifically of a centrifugal fundamental force vector, the three-dimensional force vector that defines magnetism. Anyway, the constructive and destructive interference that we see on either quote-unquote pole of a magnet is the interplay, the pressure mediation between the magnetic and the dielectric. If there was only a magnetic field, there's only magnetism around a magnet, that's why it's a magnet. Very superficial, very unintelligent, very inaccurate statement. We would only see, like, lightness or only darkness. There would be nothing impressive looking at a, at a supercell or a ferrocell. There would be nothing impressive. Who wants to buy that? Who, you know. The reason why it's so impressive and the reason why it is so holographic is that the most fundamental two principles, the conjugate principles of force and motion, earth and acceleration, literally the tau, the yin and the yang, of the entire universe, the magnetic and the dielectric, creates 3D holography. If you've ever held a, a, a supercell in your hand, the holography is mind-bending. It fascinates people. People are the most jaded people on Earth. You put a supercell in there, like, wow, my God. The reason why it's fascinating is that there is a fight, not really a fight, but the interplay of the constructive and destructive interference of the magnetic and the dielectric. There is not merely a magnetic field around a magnet. If there was, the supercell would be the most unimpressive thing that ever was created. It would not impress anybody. But since the conjugate pair of the universe are working out their mutual pressures, force and motion, inertia and acceleration, on the, on the image of the supercell, in real time, by the way, that is why it is fascinating. There is not merely magnetism around a magnet. Those constructive and destructive interference lines light, dark, light, dark, and a dark, so, dark uh, hole in the middle, exists because there are two fields working themselves out. Kind of like a simple or crude analogy would be like uh, the pressure fields of the shower head, which would be equivalency of the magnetic, and uh, the pressure of the water draining down the, the tub drain hole, which would be the dielectric. You know, the mutual working out of those pressures. You know, creating f neat little vortices and fascinating phenomena. Kind of a crude analogy, but pretty accurate. Anyway, I hope you like this video. If you do, any donation is always welcome. Or you can tell me to jump off a cliff. It doesn't really matter. Wisdom is of utmost importance. Understanding secondary to that and sister thereof. Thank you so much for watching. Lux Everetas. I hope you think about this. If you do, you'll be a lot smarter than everybody else out there. But more importantly, wiser. You'll actually understand one of the fundamental principles of the entire universe, which is immutable and undeniable. Thank you.